and we're live. <laughs> Welcome to Creatively Uncorked. My name is Shanna and I'll be your artist for this painting. So today's painting is going to be the Cheshire Cat and this is a fun one. It's a little bit messy so I know there were some people that were concerned about that um, but it's okay. We're gonna have fun with it and a lot of you probably aren't painting along. You're just checking it out to see if you want to do the next painting so you'll get to see me make a mess and that's probably gonna be even more fun. All right, so I'm Shanna Kramer, and this is Creatively Uncorked with the Creatively Uncorked live events, and we're doing these, we have three of them a week scheduled right now. What we're doing is we are sending out art kits for these paintings, and you can get an art kit on our website at creativelyuncorked.com. You can get an art kit with or without brushes, new brushes, used brushes, totally up to you. You can change your colors if you want. Just let us know when you at, put, put it in the notes at checkout. And then we can swap out some colors for you. And let's see. So what we have today, this is what you would have gotten in your art kit, not the palette. <laughs> you would have gotten your pre-sketch canvas. You would have gotten your instruction sheet, your paints, probably your brushes, probably a plate, uh, everything you need to be good to go. And your instructions, if you have written instructions and you just want to follow along with those, that's great. Go ahead and do that. Uh, if you wanted to follow along with the painting or with the video, better idea. <laughs> Videos are more fun. So this is my Cheshire Cat cheat sheet that I'll be looking at as we paint. I have my two favorite brushes that I'll be using for most of the painting. I have my big bl uh, blue bristle brush, which you can tell is well used, well loved. And then I have my little filbert brush, which is one of my favorite brushes. And I will probably use one of these little tiny small brushes just for some details. Just around the nose, the eyes maybe. We don't need it for a lot. All right. So let's see if we have any people in the room yet. How are you guys doing? And say hi. <laughs> I always want to know who's here and can't always see it. So do say hi to me. Okay. Also, Maddie is with me here today. Hi. Hi, Maddie. <laughs> if you've taken a class at Creatively Uncorked, you've probably met Maddie. Uh, she's a super fun teacher. And <laughs> she's going to do the live on Thursday. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. And on Saturday. Ooh, also, we're doing something a little bit different with that live on Saturday. So all of the lives that we've done so far have been in this private group, private Facebook group, just for us. And so far we've saved all of the videos in here just for us. Um, but on Saturday, we're going to do one thing a little bit different. Hi, Heather. Hi, Kim. We are going to do a video live on our main Facebook page for everyone. So that'll be out in the world to the public for everybody to see and paint along with. Um, same as same rules as now. We're going to have art kits available on the website, of course, for those. So if you want an art kit to paint along, uh, the difference is, so these videos have been saved for us so far. The ones on the main page are not going to be saved for us. They'll be there for a couple of days just in case anybody didn't get a chance to see it right away, but then those will get removed. If you did get an art kit though, then you will get a link to the video so you can go back and watch it anytime. If you did not get an art kit, then watch the video while it's live or while it's still posted. Otherwise, it'll be going away shortly. Okay, more details on that later. Who's ready to get started? Hi, Sherry. So here is my Cheshire cat. <laughs> I painted his brother yesterday, um, the white rabbit. I guess they're not really related, but um, <laughs> probably not anyway. It was okay. It started out as an Easter bunny, and then anyway, it, it turned into Alice in Wonderland. All right, so I have my colors today. I have my phthalo blue, yellow, neon pink, neon purple, and white. So these are my main colors that I'll use for all of this. So dark to light, I'm, I'll be working dark to light today. So I'll be working with my blue first. So acrylic paint, just go ahead and dunk your medium brush in the water. And then I'll go ahead and just pick up some of that blue. I'm debating. Yeah, I think I'll just go ahead and put some of that out on my plate. I know I'm gonna make a mess with it later. So I might as well just put it on the plate. All right, then I'll set these colors aside. I don't need them quite yet. Uh, what do you think of the new camera angle? We got the second picture the picture in picture, the hi. <laughs> because I noticed looking back on these videos that my hand is in the way and you can't really see a lot of the brush strokes. 
So just to avoid that from happening again, we have the second camera angle that you should be able to get pretty good details. So we're starting out with all of the dark colors first, dark colors being all the blue. So I'm just going to start filling in his eyes with the blue. And then just referencing my original photo here, got darker on the eyes, kind of the, uh, the bottom eyeliner there. Back up on the top of the eye. Careful for the wet paint. Don't stick your hand in it. Do I say that every time? Yes, I probably do. Do I stick my hand in the wet paint anyway every time? Yes, that too I do. Okay, so now I've got his dark eyes. And then I'll come right down to the top of that nose. And if you're painting along and you want me to slow down, just say so. Otherwise, I'll just keep right on going. The good news is, with this video being saved for later, then you can just rewatch it and pause when you need to. If I'm going too fast, just pause it. All right, so this is the scribble technique. <laughs> it's my favorite way to paint, just scribble. And the Filbert brush, I think, is my favorite brush for this technique. You just paint sideways with it, just scribble. Nice and easy. How much snow did you guys get today? I was kind of surprised about all that. Way more snow than I was expecting. And I'm not saying we got a ton of snow because it's probably all melted again by now, but, and it was weird snow. It was like mini snowball snow. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just giving him some dark edges on his ears. So he's got some dark shadows below his ears as well. So just kind of scribble in right below his ear. And this is fur, so don't be afraid to, uh, to be all furry and scribbly with it. So let's see, we want to go right under his mouth, bottom lip. So leading with the skinny edge. Also helps if you lighten up on the coffee. Not me, not today, but you. Uh, just, you know, <laughs> it goes a long way towards straightening, painting straight lines. There we are, so there's his bottom lip. And, mm -hmm. yeah, let's paint his, I'm gonna go ahead and paint his teeth. So we've got all these big kind of zigzags in there. And so I'm just going to take, yes, I'm still using the big brush. Just kind of imagine you're painting around the teeth. It's, it's not completely zigzaggy. It's not like pumpkin zigzaggy, but. So we'll get some, actually, I think this is a good time to switch to the small brush. Seems way too early to switch to the small brush, but there you go. Yeah, small brush works way better here. Sherry, are you guys painting today? How many of you have seen the Alice in Wonderland movies? The ones with Johnny Depp? I kind of want to ask who's your favorite character, but obviously it's Cheshire Cat, right? <laughs> <laughs> and no, he doesn't look like this in the movies. Well, I haven't watched those videos in so long. <laughs> well, what else do you have to do? <laughs> <laughs> Right? <laughs> All this isolation going on, might as well start. See, now I just keep re-watching series that I've already seen before. It just I, sh I could try watching something new, but yeah. I mean. <laughs> I haven't started the new season on Ozark yet. Ooh, watch but it. I hear it's good. It's good. Okay, Sherry, show us your painting when you're done. I can't wait to see it. Uh, did Angus not, uh, not want to paint today?
Okay, I'm gonna leave his top lip alone. He's got some good sharp teeth in there. I will come in and paint this dark right around his nose. Just a little bottom edges there. I'll come in just a little bit on the ears. And some of this I'll come back over with more of a purple color. But right now I just really wanna get my darks, my blues in there. And some of this I will definitely cover up. <laughs> it's been a Monday, aw, sorry. I've been hearing that a lot today though. Does that mean like there are sunspots or something <laughs> that are affecting us all? Actually, it's kind of more of a blurs day, isn't it? Why have I never heard that before? <laughs> With all this isolation, it's kind of running together a little bit. Woke up, uh, woke up today and realized this is the beginning of week five of isolation now. Oh my gosh. I know, I know, yeah. And I don't know how you guys are handling it, but I've been doing just fine <laughs> until recently. Uh, like all of a sudden, all at once on Saturday, I was like, nope, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I need to go outside. I need some fresh air. And then, of course, it was cold. So it's not like you could just go outside and uh, hang out in the backyard or anything. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it was going great for a while. But I guess four weeks is the absolute max. That's like done. Four weeks of uh, isolation is, is uh, hard, hard enough. All right, so what I'm doing in here is I have these little bit of scribbles. So I'm just going right, uh, right along under his chin. He's kind of got a big fat chin, big fat fluffy chin. I mean, he's still a cat after all. And he's got his, the kind of the arch of his back up this way. So yesterday when I was painting the white rabbit, I was kind of debating right up until the end if he was a, a cute rabbit or a mean rabbit. And I think he turned out, well, he turned out looking kind of cute, but I would say that the white rabbit is probably not a cute rabbit. There are an awful lot of versions of this story, and I think it just depends on which one you're more familiar with, how you feel about the characters. And if you're an audible person, and I totally am, I listen to books all the time. Uh, there's a book called Alice, and I'm, I'll think of the author here, uh, probably while I'm painting, but, and it's called Alice, and it is absolutely not the Alice in Wonderland story that you grew up with. <laughs> and Cheshire in that story is very crazy, and that's where this Cheshire came from. You see how he's got the crazy eyes? Yup, it's the Cheshire from the books. So if you ever wanted to look that one up, it'll probably give you nightmares. But it's a pretty good book. Okay, so some little scribbles under his bottom lip. So he's starting to look a little furry and a little scary. And actually, come to think of it, a little like a cookie monster. <laughs> okay, maybe not really, but. Yeah, so I think we've got our darks in there. All right. So let's start on some purples. I'll just wipe that blue off the brush. Take a little bit of, and here's, I'm going to be mixing a lot. So these two colors right here, this neon violet and this purple, I'm sorry, neon violet and phthalo blue. These are my colors. So when I mix these together, they make all kinds of beautiful shades of purple. You can get a pretty good range of purples with just those two colors. So those are the colors we use most often for the purples here. I've also got this pink. Okay, and if you've been watching these videos for a while, you've probably heard me rant about these pinks. <sighs> They're beautiful colors, but if you do a painting with these beautiful bright colors and then you hang it in the sun, these colors will disappear. They will fade to nothing and it doesn't take very long either. A year later, those paintings are just about blank. So be forewarned, when you're using these beautiful bright colors, they will go away. So don't paint your, or don't hang your painting in the sunlight. How about that? 
Okay, so I'm taking some white, bringing it up here to my purple area. Got my couple of different purples, maybe more white, maybe more of this purple. So thalo blue is a very powerful color and it's very has very strong tinting strength. So whatever you mix the thalo blue with, it will take over. And whereas this uh, neon violet, very puny, very weak. Okay, too much paint in the brush. All right. So now I'm coming back on the top of the head with some little scribbles. Get my pink to show up a little there. There we are. So I've got some pinks, some purples, and do mix white with these colors. You want to lighten them up a little bit, so you're, you'll want some white with them. A little more white, a little more pink. Oh, so anyway, so I was telling you how I really couldn't stand it in the house anymore and just needed to get out for a minute. <sighs> oh, I'll tell you later. <laughs> I, I <laughs> we paint for peace and for happiness, right? This is relaxation. It, it's like a meditation with a paintbrush. That's what painting is for. It's the one nice, happy little task that we can all do. It doesn't matter how good you are at it. It just kind of sets the world right. Paint makes it up. Preach. <laughs> <laughs> yes, painting is good. It's good for you. <laughs> Very good for you. So I'm just going to keep painting and not think about Home Depot. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you the story. You know why? Okay, because I'm working on Crazy Eye Cheshire Cat, that's why. So just, you know, getting in the, in the Crazy Eye mood right here. So I went to Home Depot and I, okay, I'm not kidding. <laughs> uh, and I was there for like five minutes and I had enough and that was enough for me and I, I was ready to go back to isolation. Um, but we, we pulled up out front and there was a, a couple there, a young couple, an Instagram couple. And they were standing out in front of the Home Depot with their camera or, or with their phones and their masks on. And they were doing the big, you know, the hand signals, you know, and they were, you know, doing their, uh, um, their selfies with their masks on. Well, <laughs> as soon as they got into that store, they took their masks off. So they were wearing masks just for a selfie. They went into a store with people and took their masks off. All right, end of rant. <laughs> Look at this. We're painting happy, nice Cheshire cat ears. Beautiful cat ears. So on the ears, I'm just putting a little dab of pink out at the end and then blending white right over the top of it and then pulling that back toward the head. So what that's doing is it's blending from pink to white. So he's got some nice bright insides of his ears take some purple and go from this way to that. There we are. All right, so that's a nice year. We'll leave that one alone. Just after I said I was going to leave it alone. Okay, I'll just keep painting it. I guess we'll just keep painting that ear. All right, moving on to the other ear again with the pink out toward the end of the ear. Actually, we'll go right, right toward the inside. This nice bright pink. Bring in a little bit of white. It's got some nice, uh, nice ears. Okay, so just around the edge of the head. And I know you guys are all waiting for the part where we finally get to splash some paint around. Soon, I promise, soon. This is actually a really quick painting, so it won't take us long at all to get to that part. So I'm taking a pretty decent amount of white in here, kind of 
blending that purple around his face. Kind of getting close to the eyes. And a little more white in that. And I'm kind of doing brush strokes both ways here. I, I wanted to have his, uh, his fur making sure it's kind of going sideways there. Just a little slight slant down. Okay, looking pretty good. We have a few more pink areas we'll get to once that starts to dry. And at any point, if you have too much paint on your brush, just wipe it off and start over. It's way easier to start over with new paint than it is to um, work with what you have on your brush if you have too much. So coming down to the below the, his lip again, bottom lip, we've got that nice blue in there and then we're going to fade it off into this purple. So a little blue, a little purple, and you can see how it just starts to gently fade. So you know this is where it's handy to have that second camera angle. Because I know I'm putting my hand in the way of the first camera when I do this. And then I'll start blending off into white. Now just taking some nice white, just off on the edges. Just kind of painting right along his, uh, his bottom jaw. So Cheshire Cat, he fades away, except for his smile. So that's why we're going to be fading him away down here at the bottom with, our, um, with some really drippy paint, some watery paint. Almost a watercolor technique, not quite. Watercolor, you would uh, never use white, probably, or not very much if you do. With acrylic, use all the white you want. Okay, so I'll probably go a little more pink down here. There, and just brighten it up in a few spots. So that's looking pretty good. I'll set my filbert brush aside now and switch over to my little brush. And taking some straight pink and just filling in that nose. He's gonna have a nice bright nose. All right, and I might add a second layer or I might add a little white to it. Maybe I'll add a second layer of white to it. Yep. Okay, so that'll be good until we get to the details later. I think this area is dry enough now that I can add the top lip. And I'll do that with my small brush, but it'll take a few brush strokes. Uh, small brushes, great for fine detail, as long as you don't have too much of them, too much detail, uh, because they just don't hold that much paint. If you're trying to do a long brush stroke, that's where a bigger brush will work better. So I'll oftentimes use um, a big flat brush for details, just because the big flat brushes hold more paint and you can really make long lines like this without dipping your brush back in the paint. All right, one detail there. I'll be adding my darker color back over that bottom lip. Way too bright. And you can see how these colors blend. That looks pretty nice. So we'll give this a few minutes, uh, let the paint set up for a little bit, and then when we come back we'll have these eyes 
which will really make it pop. And then we have some details around the nose. Uh, we have the big fun splashy parts. And then we'll see what details we need after that. So if you're taking a break, now's the time to take a break. If you want to keep going, you can keep going. Um, generally, we don't really need to worry about any particular part of this painting not being dry before moving on. So the part I wanted to show you. All right, so I've gotten a lot of questions <laughs> about, um, so I've been threatening to take these paintings down off of Facebook eventually. I haven't taken any down yet. Um, and people keep asking me, well, can you leave them up for a while longer? Um, maybe, maybe I can. I'll try to because I know we're still all stuck inside and need something to do. So I'll try to leave those, uh, these paintings up a little while longer, the videos. Uh, and then when they do go away, they're going to be on our Patreon. So if you go to patreon.com slash creatively uncorked, uh, then you'll be able to find all of these. So uh, we have different levels, so you can just find out whatever, whatever level is best for you. If you wanna just do the acrylic paintings, if you wanna do all of the crafts, if you wanna do just the kids paintings, I mean, that's up to you. So you can decide on that. Um, that's just a, a low monthly fee. So that's something that's very affordable. You just use your own supplies. But for these lives, and again, these lives are free. You don't have to pay for them. If you're using your own supplies, it doesn't cost you a thing. Uh, but if you're using your own, if you are using art supplies, if you want to purchase an art kit, you're more than welcome to do that at creativelyuncorked.com. So the art kits are definitely an option. If you choose not to purchase an art kit and use your own supplies, then um, I'll be posting what colors you need, uh, what materials you need at some point before the painting. But we have right now three paintings a week scheduled so i know this is a little hard to see here but right now we're at cheshire cat thursday we have heart of paris saturday that's the blood moon that one will be fun um, we have the rooster the rise and shine rooster that's next monday and this uh, boat and whale that one will be wednesday kissing in the rain i know a lot of people have already purchased kits for that one and then we have cypresses we have the lazy rooster or the crazy rooster and that one we voted a while ago on the Facebook group, you guys probably remember, which rooster do you guys want? And it was close. <laughs> it was close between the Rise and Shine rooster and the Crazy Rooster. So we ended up putting them both up. Uh, we have a few more in May as well. So three paintings a week that we're doing um, that you can paint along with for no charge. That's a pretty good deal. And I hope we're keeping you occupied <laughs> and uh, keeping you entertained while you're in isolation. Um, but if you, if you do want to watch those forever, Patreon's a place to go. Uh, for the art kits, if you wanted to just get an art kit to go where you don't have to watch a live or sign up for an event, then if you go to creativelyuncorked.com and you see our shop section, uh, you'll see it in the menu or right up at the top, it'll say shop. Just click on that. And then there's where you'll be able to see all of the art kits to go. And there are over a hundred different paintings in the art kits to go section and we make those to order. So you can order them, we'll make it up, we'll send it out to you. We do, um, we do delivery in town so we can just bring it to your house. Otherwise, if you wanna come pick it up, we'll do curbside delivery. Just give us a call when you get here and we'll bring it out. Uh, we have, then these others are just um, kind of one-offs. <laughs> so like the boho wall hangings, I think we have one left of each is all. So those, and those are on sale, so those will be gone soon. And I think that in the kids' watercolor kit, that's also, we only had one left last time I checked. Uh, and we we'll also have a couple of wood signs. There are only a few wood pieces left. So once those are gone, we aren't probably going to replace them right away. Here's one that keeps the kids busy for a while, the mini wood cutouts. And we give you a whole bunch of cutouts. You can flip them over, paint both sides, and it should keep them busy for a while. Um, Otherwise, we do have these virtual art kits, and that's something where you'd get just that one painting. You'd download the instructions, uh, you'd get the traceable for it, so you can trace it out on your own canvas. And that's helpful if you, if you don't, um, don't want to freehand draw anything, so this way you can just trace it. Uh, so that's nice. And then you also get a link to the video. So that's another option for you. But yeah, and that's what we have. And then these, the chunky knit blanket kits. We've been sending out a lot of these. Uh, just so you know, we have run out of three colors already, so I've had to take those off the website. Uh, these are the colors we have left. So if you want to do a chunky knit blanket, and this won't be as hard as you think. We have an instructional video that's very step-by-step. -step. Stop, rewind anytime you feel like it. 
it'll be pretty easy. I think that one will be pretty easy to follow along with, not too tough. Okay, so let's see if we're, Cheshire's getting dry yet. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Heather. Heather, are you painting along too? I think you paint along with most of these, don't you, Heather? I'm just fanning it because, you know, I'm not made out of patience. <laughs> if I was at home, I'd be blow drying it. And even when we get to the later part and we start adding all this water to it, it's still, that water will still dry pretty fast because it'll be pretty thin. It'll be just water, not a lot of paint. Okay. Checking my instructions here. I'm, tr I'm checking the instructions because I want to be able to follow along as closely as what the instructions are that you guys are getting. But whatever. <laughs> Let's do those eyes. <laughs> so with the eyes, he's got the, the bright yellow eyes at the bottom and the really, really green at the top. So my paint water now is pretty blue. So I really won't get a true yellow. I'll get a bright green though. And that works. So I'm just taking the tiniest little dot of yellow onto my plates and thinning it out with water. Should be pretty thin. And coming back up to those eyes and just filling them in. And I'm going right over the blue. Don't worry about the blue. This is a transparent yellow, so and yes, I'm going all the way to the top on both eyes. All right, and then with that super, super thin yellow touch of blue, teeny little touch of blue, and that'll get really bright green, maybe a little more yellow. Hmm, white maybe? I maybe don't want white, but I'm going to try it. All right. So now I've got this green. It might not even be green enough. Maybe I do want more blue. Hmm. So now you get to watch me mix colors for five minutes <laughs> while I get the perfect shade of green. All right, there we are. And come back up here to the top of the eye, and I'm just going to blend that part way down. So you see what happens when you mix it with white? It'll cover up that blue a little bit. I'm not worried about it because I know I can, I know I can bring that blue back with uh, just a little bit of paint. Not a big deal. So Maddie, what was the best part of your day? Yeah. Does he win? <laughs> yeah. Um, I can hear swearing a lot, so maybe because <laughs> <laughs> mad. Maybe. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to leave Chesha's eyes alone for now. Um, they aren't quite done yet because I want to come back and I want to add this darker blue back in there. And highlights, of course, and that's really going to bring him together quite a lot. I also think I want maybe a few more darks around his eyes. I put dark blue around in here, but I think I also want to make my, maybe a little bit more purpley purples. So let's do that. So a little more blue and some of this purple. Heck, why not some pink? But I'm keeping it pretty dark, not adding white. Oh, Heather, so the kids are taking up the computer then. Hmm. Well, tomorrow. Tomorrow sounds fine. Okay, so I'm just scribbling in. Second camera angle might be helpful here, so I'm just scribbling this in. 
So that did darken it up a little. That's good. I want really darks around his eyes. That's kind of the most, well, between the eyes and the smile, that's kind of the most important part. So that's where you want the most contrast. So I'm just adding some really dark areas around those really bright eyes. And I'll add some little bits of fur down in here. Come up more purpley. Now he's got some fur back in there again. Okay. Kind of redefining the tops of his eyes a little with a little bit of a brighter color here. Just bringing in some little white, little contrast. So I think I want to add some detail to the nose, so I'm going back to my tiniest brush. Just taking a little bit of blue, mixing some water. And if you kind of roll your brush on your plate, it'll take off the excess paint and sort of uh, get your brush into a finer point. And they all just come right along under the nose. Just kind of go right around that edge again. A little bit right down the middle. Just add some little fur in here just to kind of connect the dots. Maybe add some dark around his bottom lip again. I wonder if those eyes are dark enough, I or dry enough. I bet they are. The paint we put on the eyes was pretty thin, so if you can avoid putting your hand in the wet paint there and just add those darks back to the eyes. And medium brush, small brush, whichever brush works for you, or whatever brushes you have. I'm thinking a lot of people got new brushes with their kits, so you'll have a different brush set than what I'm working with, but you'll have all the brushes you need. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and if that happens, if you just totally drop your brush, you can probably pick up a little bit of paint if you just catch it right away. See, I panicked for no reason. <laughs> Came right off. There. So now he's getting some crazy eyes. Yep, definitely I'm going to call those crazy eyes. Okay, so I think we're... Hoofta. He's kind of creeping me out a little. <laughs> with, <laughs> with those weird eyes. <laughs> hmm. Ah, okay, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to stop. All right, so what I'm going to do instead, actually, is get to those fun, drippy parts. So all of this fun, splashy, drippy parts all around the edges, that's what I want to do next. So I have all these brushes in my water. I think I'm going to just take them out and set them aside. You know the rules about cleaning your brushes, so I'm not going to let them dry out. I'm just going to set them here momentarily. And I'm going to go with the biggest brush I have because it's going to hold the most water. So I'll start over on this side. And what I'm doing is I'm just taking some little glob of paint and I'm just coming out can you see this? I'll keep it on camera. So I'm just going to bring up that scribble and a little more water and tapping it. Tap it again if you want. I think I want a little more color in there. So I'll kind of go into some of this little pink. And that pink's not very watery, but okay. 
So there we are. So let's try and get some a little bit of watery purple over here. Get some brighter pinks in there too. So your paint does need to be pretty darn liquidy. Um, and now I'm, I'm just kind of adding a little bit of paint in there. A little more paint in there. <laughs> I just scribble it in. Okay, just mush it in. And then I'm just taking a brush load of water. Bunch of water and then adding it, tapping it, adding it, tapping it. See? So now even without an easel, I'm getting those big fun drips. Kind of looks like a bat, doesn't he? Let's get some color in the middle. Get rid of those wings. Sorry, that's probably pretty loud, isn't it? Okay, so now he's got some nice paint dripping down. You can, you might be able to tap in just a little bit if it's really watery paint, tap in a few colors a little bit, and if it doesn't go exactly where you want, stop. Don't keep messing with it. Yeah, let's see if we can find some more brights. So this is, I know this isn't showing up on the main camera, but if you take a look at the secondary camera here, Let's see if I can, I can probably switch for you. Okay, so now I'm just kind of taking some of that really sort of liquidy, bright, bright, bright pink. And I'm just kind of gobbing some colors on there. Again, tap it. And when you're doing this, if it if you can keep your colors kind of in the same range, so any if you're doing blues, pinks, purples, fine, that's great. Those colors are all going to look great together, so don't even worry about it. I probably wouldn't go throwing yellow in this, though. I mean, it's your painting, you do what you want, but I'm just warning you. I mean, you could. Pink and yellow looks great together. Pink and, or I mean, yellow and purple, though. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now we're getting some nice drippy drips. Okay, so I'm just going to hold my canvas here for a few minutes. Oh, oh good, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think the second view is probably pretty helpful. I didn't realize how, uh, how much I was covering up the brush strokes with my hands the first few videos until I went back and rewatched them. Um, and yeah, it's, if you want to see the brush strokes, yeah, you can't really see it uh, with just the overhead view. So. Just going to let my paint drip for a little while longer. <laughs> so you know that whole deal about not wanting to uh, stick your hand in wet paint? <laughs> I'm screwed now. <laughs> I don't think I can avoid it. <laughs> but what fun streaks. See, this is one of the reasons I like this painting. This is one that you can really have fun with. You could just put fun colors on there and look what's happening down in here where you get that kind of that pink and purple, it just pushes that blue right out of the way. Just makes really interesting marks. And then we've got this thin and this thick and this purple and this pink and, uh, and then you leave those white gaps and it just adds all that contrast and it's just beautiful. Ooh, and hey, check out this idea while we're waiting for this to dry or for the paint to run. So I'll set that aside for a second and switch it back to this camera okay so this this is the flow art and you've probably seen the flow art on our calendar it's in the art kits as well so this is just a flow art canvas this is how it turned out pretty cool right so what if this was a background to cheshire what if what if his face was painted over that background with just like the drips kind of going over this i don't know i think it would be kind of cool i kind of want to try it <laughs> because Cheshire kind of, he fades, you know, he fades away. The only thing that's left is his mouth. His mouth is an, and his eyes. Oh. So, yeah, so I think if you just painted like white behind his smile and white behind his eyes, so yeah. you just get those two things that show up on this background. And then these other colors, you just paint it right over the top and they'll just kind of naturally fade. And then this, of course, you know, 
Pretty fun, right? Anyway, just an idea. <laughs> I kind of want to try it. Okay, so I'll try to uh, clean up a little bit of my mess. All right, and back to Cheshire. There we are, get uh, the second angle back. And I think at this point, I'm probably not going to add a lot more. Let's see, definitely I'll add a little more to the eyes, maybe to the teeth. I'll probably add a little more to the teeth. And maybe some like right around his head. So we did these nice, uh, nice big drippy areas below him, but really not on the top of his head. And nope, no garbage can nearby. That's okay. Just want to keep my water nearby, but out of the way. So I think. If I add some white scribbles right around him, and this is just white paint, just kind of a slightly liquidy white paint right around him. And then if I take a little bit of, you can kind of see this watery leftover colors that I have, and just a little bit, just right into that. Kind of blend it into his fur and his face, but, and that just kind of gives it a nice, uh, kind of a halo-y hint of that pinkish color. Since it's a brush, I think I'll try that kind of off over here too, maybe with a little more blues. So I have watery, just watery white is what I'm using. And my white's pretty much done for. <laughs> I was trying to keep it clean by putting it out of my plate and then mixing it there, but no, that, that never, never lasts. So I give up. Just gonna use whatever color white I still have. So I'm just scribbling this liquidy white on here. And it's liquidy because my brush is full of water. Then I'll just take whatever color here and just kind of go right around him, but more white than that. So what, that way this color is a little bit, so if you've done any watercolor, this is kind of a, you know, how the, you can get your foreground to kind of fade into the background just with some, you know, background washes, washy techniques. This is a little like that. Um, that's kind of the, the feel that I'm trying to carry over from watercolor into this painting. Uh, so it's, it's not going to look exactly like watercolor. You just can't, <laughs> but you can get it pretty close. You can get the feel, you can bring the feel across. So I, I kind of like how that background just kind of fun and just kind of wispy away. So again, a little more dirty water at this point, a little more white, just kind of scribble it under his ear. Just a little, not going overboard. And I'll try that a little of that purple this time. And maybe a little more. So I kind of get that nice, uh, nice color. He, like he's kind of starting to fade away in here. So he's kind of starting to blend into the background already. So I'm just kind of going right up to the edge, maybe a little over. Then I can come back with my sharper, sharper brush strokes and get a little bit more of a defined area around his head. Bring back a few brush strokes. Maybe a little more on the ear. We don't want to bring back too much detail. Just enough to, you know, to know where his ears are, right? And I kind of like the way that this part fades into the background. Let's see if I can do that on the other side of his head too. So again, liquidy water. Liquidy water? <laughs> that is exactly the kind of water you want, the liquidy kind. A little bit of white would help too. White paint in your liquidy water. That's better. Now his head is kind of fading away. How about those ears? Can we make his ears fade a little more? Something like that. Okay. 
back to my little tiny brush and my not quite white paint. I'll see if I can sharpen up his teeth a little. Although I don't really want to go, <laughs> I kind of feel like this is a no. <laughs> uh, I think that I'm probably gonna, yeah, stick my hand in paint. Um, I think that, you know what? I think I like his teeth like they are. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna like his teeth just like they are. <laughs> and instead of the teeth, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do the eyes, but here's a trick for you. There you go. A lot less wet paint to stick my hands in now. And you can you can look at your reference and paint. Doesn't matter if it's upside down, right side up, as long as it matches, right? I'll just do those great big reflections in his eyes. And there you go. If you wanted to wait for this to dry and come back and do a few touch-ups, you absolutely can. I'm not sure if I'll paint any further on it, but if I did, I would probably just go around the eyes a little bit more and see if I can bring out a few more details in there. But this background, I think I'm definitely going to leave that alone because this is the fun part and that part I'm happy with. Um, that's just the funnest way to paint is, is the big splashy bold strokes. Kind of the, <laughs> kind of the best way to paint, I think. So, okay, well, thank you all for watching. I'm glad you all could be here. Um, tell your friends, invite your friends next time. This Thursday we have Maddie. Woo! <laughs> Come paint with me. Maddie's going to be teaching. What's your painting Thursday? Oh my gosh, I forgot already. Oh, oh, the Heart of Paris. So here, I'll show you. Okay, I'll just click on it so you can see the whole picture. It's a really cool painting. It's one that we've been doing for years. It's lovely, isn't it? So when you get your art kit, you'll have your Eiffel Tower all sketched out for you. You'll have your, your paint, which is pretty simple. It's black, white, a little yellow, a yep, little bit of red. Um, and then we'll walk you right through it. So definitely easier if you have it pre-sketched. If not, go ahead and pre-sketch that part on your canvas before, before 7, and then we can all be ready to start at the same time. So yeah, Maddie will be walking you through that one. And then were any of you guys here? I think, Heather, you might have been here for the, the moon, the lit moon. The lit moon was a really fun one. There were a lot of people that painted that one. And that, so that was pretty fun. And then, so this, uh, this fr Saturday, I mean, we'll be doing this one, which is Blood Moon. Similar technique, much brighter colors. Well, is it brighter colors, really? Not really. <laughs> Not really, it's just different colors. Um, but the moon paintings are always fun and easy and great for the whole family. So if you and the kids or the friends or whatever are all still up at seven o'clock on a Saturday night, right? <laughs> uh, come back to our Creatively Uncorked page and that one will be on our Facebook page, not this group. So just our main Facebook page and then, then we'll be painting Blood Moon with Maddie. Yay! <laughs> so that'll be a fun one. So thanks for, thanks for painting along and please post your paintings. I can't wait to see them. Yes, <laughs> And we'll see you guys next time.